to today and joining us. Um, I will kick off. My name is Harold Brons. I'm International Business Development Manager at the Water Alliance. And uh, we're hosting today's webinar together with our partners from the, from the Catalan Water Partnership, who will introduce themselves uh, uh, shortly uh, after my welcoming words. Um, some small house rules we'd like to ask you and well, actually encourage that to put your questions in the chat. Uh, we will deal with them at the, at the end of, of the presentation session during the Q&A. Uh, if we're not able to deal with them uh, today, then we'll see that we come back to you via email. Um, we would like to ask you, especially the, the, the speakers, to turn off your mic and your camera. And when you're introduced, that, uh, that you then uh, put them on and then you're live with us. So the program for today, um, we will start uh, after this uh, welcoming words with the introduction of the Catalan Water Partnership and the Spanish water issues, after which I will do the same for the Water Alliance and the Dutch side. Uh, then three uh, Catalan Spanish companies will pitch their technology, their needs and what they're looking for. And uh, the same for three Dutch companies. We will then have a 10 minute Q and A session and Please put in your questions in the chat and Eric Santos of the Catalan Water Partnership will discuss them together with you and the, uh, the companies. Um, after which we will come to an end and I will briefly touch base on, uh, on the B2Match uh, platform where, where you can use uh, the coming days, the coming week to make one-on-one -on -one, uh, video meetings with, uh, with the Spanish companies, with the Dutch companies back and forth. Um, would like to give the floor to Xavier from uh, Xavier Amores from the Catalan uh, Water Partnership to introduce uh, himself and uh, our Spanish partners. Thank you very much, Harold. Good morning, everybody. I'm Xavier Amores, uh, Director and Manager of the Catalan Water Partnership. Uh, thank you for your, thank you for joining us today in this event organized between uh, Weather Alliance and Catalan Water Partnership. First of all, I, I would like to congratulate uh, Eric Santos, Harold, Stefan, Tiemann, Hale, and Juliet all the team of Water Alliance for the organization of this first intercluster between Netherlands and Spain. Today, I would like to talk about the uh, water market in Catalonia for all the Dutch companies. I hope everyone participate in this matchmaking that we will open the next days. As you know, uh, the opportunities are not easy to find in this hard time of COVID-19. People are trying to keep in touch to new markets and clients without fairs, congress or business trips. This is the first time we try to organize this kind of virtual matchmaking. I think it's an innovative initiative for us, and I want to suggest to all the participants to be open to the maximum number of meetings because sometimes websites or short introductions in B2Match, it's not so complete as a meeting. I will recommend you to accept all the request meetings. Maybe you can find a new client, a partner, distributor for your technologies in Catalonia, Spain, or Netherlands. Why not a partner for R&D project? Well, I, I will start by describing my organization, then we will move on to the introduction of some challenge, trends, and main priorities of the water sector in Catalonia by my colleague, Eric Santos. Uh, Catalan Water Partnership, oops. Oh, no, okay. Uh, we are the, the cluster of sustainable use of water in Catalonia, and we have the, the same objective of all clusters as Water Alliance, competitiveness, innovation, business development, internationalization, we promote every year more than 25 projects in cooperation. Uh, this year we are participating in seven European projects as COSME, Horizon 2020, NOSUP, LIFE. And in a normal year, no, not this year, we are involved in five or six international events. Last year we visited uh, USA, with Tech Fair as uh, Water Alliance, but also we visited Singapore, South Africa or, or Colombia. Uh, we are uh, more than 100 members, small, medium enterprise, big companies, universities, research centers. Everybody knows water is one of the most important sectors in clean tech area, many employees, companies. Every year, new investments related with new regulations about water and also new research and development projects. Spain and Netherlands are the leading countries in the European Union in water technologies in the past. Spain must solve problems related to the scarcity of water much sooner than other countries in Europe. We had to make very important improvements, test, adapt new technologies to the systems of irrigation, sanitation, and in all the water cycle. This, this, this is the, the 20 
Catalonian co companies participate uh, today and the next days in this matchmaking. Thank you to involve in this initiative. And thank you very much, Arpool, Blueface, and ITC to represent Catalonian companies with a short pitch uh, today. Uh, this matchmaking event is, is so related with our strategy, business development, cooperation, networking, internationalization, as all the clusters we work to promote competitiveness and also we try to contribute to the progress of society through the sustainable use of water. This is why we involve not only companies, also public administrations or, or universities. Before going on, uh, I would like to say a little about Catalonia. Probably everybody knows, uh, knows Catalonia, but well, Catalonia in, is a dynamic, industrial, diverse and business friendly economy, leader in innovative companies in Spain. Innovation and technology play a very important role and are a priority for both the public and private sectors. Financial Times describes Catalonia as the best region in Southern Europe to invest. And also Barcelona is the fifth largest European hub by number of startups, according to international rankings such as the European Union Startups Report. Some of the companies that participate uh, from Catalonia today is, was an, is an, an startup. Well, so moving on uh, to my next point, water marketing Catalonia. Uh, three years ago, PricewaterhouseCoopers analyzed water sector in Catalonia, and this slide gives uh, information about some facts about our market. It's, it's a really very important sector for my region, more than 2% of the GDP of, of Catalonia and almost 40% of the water sector in Spain. Probably everybody knows the big Spanish company in, in water, but also we, we have a, a lot of small medium enterprise uh, uh, technological centers or startups related with water and, and more than 50% of this company exporting regularly. I think it's a big of opportunity to, to cooperation. Catalonia and, and Catalan Water Partnership is a, is a good place to start in the, in the Spanish market. And I hope you can find a lot of partners for your business the, the next days. In our case, we could identify, identify four big kind of companies related with the water sector. Firstly, products, equipment, solutions related with management of water, you now filters, pumps. Also, we can add uh, chemical products, etc. Secondly, uh, and bigger uh, segment, utilities and water management companies. We also have a, a lot of knowledge intensive business service as consultancy, engineering, research companies, and also construction companies. And finally, uh, swimming pools, spas, wellness. Catalonia has the main European company in the sector, and I, it's something so different to other water clusters in Europe, uh, but it's a, a, a very important uh, activity inside of the, the cluster also cooperation with this, this sector. Uh, well, why water in Catalonia? Probably water scarcity uh, has, uh, is, is an important reason. Water scarcity in Spain and Catalonia is one of the big challenges. The increase of the certification by climate change and a very important consumption of water for sectors as agriculture, food or tourism are in a strategic agenda of all the Mediterranean countries. We have ex extreme water related events as droughts or floods and a high rainfall variability and increasing demand to, to add additional stress to water. Uh, I think a, a good example is tourism. Tourism in summer is a good example of this impact in a normal year 70 million people arrived to, to Spain. 10 years ago, we, we have a, a very intensive drought in Barcelona. Uh, Catalonia government are promoting a, a lot of actions to, to address this challenge. Nowadays, I think the, the Spanish <coughs> system of water governance is an international benchmark and success story in the Mediterranean region, facing the challenge of a lack of water reserves. And in my point of view, it is related with the, the cooperation by the public authorities, public administration and companies, public-private partnerships, and also a significant investment in r and I think this is so important. Uh, Spanish companies and Catalonian companies have proven all this technology related with the scarcity before in our country. And a lot of the, the research groups in academia cooperate with industry in demonstration sites and uh, applied research. Sometimes uh, we explain Catalonia, it's similar to California, not, not in economical point of view, but in climate uh, and also in the same problems related with water. 
Well, uh, some facts also about um, about our infrastructure. Oops. Ah, yeah. Uh, take a look of at some important facts related with our infrastructure. With more than one thousand three hundred drinking water treatment plants, two thousand was wastewater treatment plants, 520 in, in Catalonia. Uh, Spain is a leading, a leading European country in the reuse of straight wastewater, one of the leading producers of desalinated water in Europe. Uh, I think it's a four or five ranked uh, leading country in the world in terms of installed desalination capacity. And some of the, the main desalination infrastructures in the world are controlled by a Spanish company. I think uh, also Spain is a, a global reference for integrated water management and cutting edge technology provider for, for sustainable water management. Uh, and uh, this is the, my last slide. This is how increased the investment Water Agency of Catalonia in the last years. Uh, water Agency of Catalonia is the main public administration uh, and they have made a lot of investments to improve our, our sanitation system and they are working now to increase significantly water reuse. Now, uh, I will pass you over to, to Eric Santos, project manager of the Catalan Water Partnership, who will introduce some information about current challenges, trends, and opportunities for the Dutch companies and how to promote cooperation between both clusters. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Thank you, Chebe, for your introduction. So uh, now I will continue by presenting the current challenges that face today the Catalan and the Spanish water sector and that are actually uh, summarized in this figure. So to start with, and which I think is a trending topic everywhere, not only in Spain, is the digital transformation and uh, making smart all processes in industry. And it also applies to the water sector, of course. And so is decreasing the overall costs and energy requirements by pursuing a more efficient and optimized water management, and also following uh, a circular model in order to mitigate uh, or adapt to climate change. All of this always considering that minimum water quality uh, standards uh, need to be guaranteed and that these standards become tougher. Finally, the market is every time uh, more demanding in terms of sustainability in the product and services. Therefore, uh, differential value uh, is paramount in order for companies to be competitive. So uh, regarding the wastewater treatment in Catalonia, as uh, Xavier mentioned earlier, here you can see a map with all the running plants uh, distributed along the, the whole territory. The number of plants uh, has been increasing until reaching more than 500 uh, plants now, today, and a total 97% of treated population. So uh, we could say that uh, we have uh, well addressed this challenge. However, innovation and progress is uh, continuously going on in this regard and many of uh, our members and companies here in Catalonia and Spain devote many resources to this, uh, to this topic. So um, uh, probably one of the biggest challenges in Catalonia and in Spain that uh, Xavier mentioned earlier is the lack of water due to the climate conditions and the lack of rain here. Therefore, it is crucial to obtain water from alternative resources uh, one significant source here is the treatment of, the, of seawater in desalination plants by means of technologies uh, such as reverse or forward osmosis and, of, and also reverse electrodialysis. In Catalonia, there are currently two desalination plants running that give a total 80 cubic hectometers uh, of water per year. One is next to Barcelona at El Prat del Llobregat and the other one in Blanes, the Tordera plant. Uh, and actually the, the Catalan Water Agency, which is the responsible institution for such plants in Catalonia is planning to enlarge the Tordera plant. Uh, so its production increases uh, from 20 cubic hectometers up to 80. Uh, and also it is uh, planning to, uh, to construct a new desalination plant in Catalonia in order to produce more, uh, more water. So uh, apart from these two plants here in Catalonia, there are more uh, desalination plants in the Spanish territory as well as in the, in the Canary Islands. On the other, on the other hand, uh, reclaimed water is also highly used for industrial, agricultural, and many other purposes. As you can see, the volume of reclaimed water has been 
increasing over the last years, and a peak of reclaimed water can be observed back in 2008 uh, due to a strong drought uh, that occurred that year. Then uh, that might sound a bit controversial, but uh, with what I've just said, but uh, on the other hand, as a consequence of climate uh, change, storms are becoming uh, more frequent and even stronger. Actually, at the beginning of this year, the storm Gloria hit Spain, especially the northeast coast, which includes Catalonia and also Valencia. And the consequences, like, uh, like every storm, uh, have been highly dramatic. So uh, the problem is that in Spain, uh, we are not used to this kind of situation, so we don't have the infrastructure well prepared for these uh, scenarios. And uh, when flooding happens, uh, not only they cause material damages, but also deaths. In this sense, uh, we have homework to do in this regard and huge investments as well as a lot of research need, needs, needs to be carried out to effectively mitigate and prevent not only the social and, and economical damages, but also the environmental ones. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the trending topic right now is the digital transformation uh, in the industry and, of course, uh, also in the water sector, applying concepts such as the Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, and many more uh, to the water sector is uh, actually a priority in Catalonia, and many funding tools encourage this in R&D calls. Currently in, in Catalonia, there are many uh, companies, big and small medium enterprises that are going in this direction and are actually investing many resources to make water management a smart process and optimize it as much as possible. Some examples are the application of digital twins to wastewater treatment plants and also anaerobic digesters, like, like the case of depuración de aguas del Mediterráneo, and also the digitalization of water treatment processes has demonstrated huge improvements as in the reduction of energy costs as well as chemical consumption, as, in, as it is in the case of Createc, another company uh, of the Catalan Water Partnership. Uh, on the other hand, cooperating uh, with other sectors is uh, really important here in Catalonia, especially with intensive water consumed sectors. The ones in this slide are just some examples. Uh, as you already know our guests, the first one, the tourism and hospitality sector has a clear weight in the Catalan economy, in reaching almost a 15% of the Catalan GDP. As Catalan Water Partnership, we, uh, with some of our members, we are uh, currently involved in R&D project that seeks complementary solutions to improve the water treatment and management in hotel facilities. Also, the meat sector is highly relevant in Catalonia, and so is the high volumes of water that it requires, as well as the, the water pollutant, pollution potential of this, uh, of, the, of this industry. Some of the company, uh, some of the cooperation that we have uh, involved in the mid sector have been related to the nitrates pollution in groundwater. And finally, uh, another, um, another industry that has an important weight in Catalan economy, economy is the chemical industry, especially in the south of Catalonia, the chemical industry in Tarragona. Then uh, moving towards a circular economy model is a still uh, a current challenge and many innovation and new products are designed to accomplish this. At the moment, we are involved in two big Horizon 2020 projects that aim towards a circular economy. The first one that started two years ago is Hydrousa, a European project of 30 million euros that is currently applying circular nature-based technologies from non-conventional water resources. And on the other hand, we have the C4 Value project that kicked off earlier this year and its main objective is to recover valuable metals and minerals from brines produced in seawater desalination plants. Uh, sorry. Okay, so uh, water pollution is always a priority since uh, new pollutants appear in water every year. Uh, the list of emergent pollutants is uh, pretty large, but some of the most important and let me say trendiest here in Catalonia are microplastics, pharmaceutical and personal care products, and nit nitrates in, grain in groundwater. The interest in this kind of compounds here in Catalonia goes uh, from the basic research that happens in public universities and research institutes to the technology implementation at real scale by 
uh, many of the companies that uh, devote to water management. This is an interesting market for those companies and, and SMEs that focus on the detection and monitoring of such compounds in water as well. And finally, to finish, um, we have uh, eight water R&D centers in Catalonia as members, uh, as you can see here in the logos. And many companies, big, small or medium, are always willing to collaborate in different European calls. Therefore, apart from finding business partners uh, during this matchmaking event, we'd like to promote here cooperation in R&D between Dutch and Catalan companies, as well as technology centers. And uh, finally, that's all from our side. I'd like to thank the Water Alliance team for the great job organizing such events. Stefan, Juliet and Haro, thank you, and TMN as well and also the support of the Catalan team. And to all the participants behind this screen, thank you very much for attending. Uh, and after this webinar, I encourage you to go to the B2Match platform and have a fruitful matchmaking event. So thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you, Bel. Very good. Uh, I leave it to you. Impressive. Uh, ne next time, we'll ask you to do it in Dutch, the whole presentation. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for, 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 your, for your kind words and thank you also for, uh, to your team for, for uh, doing this together with us. Um, as said, my name is Harro Brons um, and I would like to introduce Water Compass Water Alliance and, uh, and present uh, a little bit more generic approach about Dutch water issues. So Water Alliance is part of a water technology innovation ecosystem uh, in the north of the Netherlands. Um, and, and, and this this circle explains uh, the, the, the run through the ecosystem. So we start at around one o'clock. Uh, there we have the scientific uh, research part uh, by Betsis, where companies put in themes, which are then during a four-year PhD program are being researched, of course, ideally to find new IP, yeah, breakthrough uh, water technology IP, that can then in the second part, uh, around uh, four o'clock, be taken up by uh, the Center of Expertise Water Technology and the BAC to scale that technology up in either a experimental lab uh, environment or even at a demo site. All in all, to assist either companies, SMEs, or startups from the ecosystem with finding that first launching customer for their uh, for their technology. In the final part, uh, around uh, nine o'clock, uh, Water Alliance comes in uh, when it's about the business. Um, and here we assist companies as we do today with matchmaking, international uh, cooperation uh, and all in all to have that international exchange and, and well to solve also water issues uh, within the, in the world. Um, so to summarize a little bit, Water Campus is, a, is the name on the which uh, on the science part, Petsis falls on the applied research part, it's a CEW and they have a strong education part which is important because we need the process engineers, the service engineers and the technologies of the future, as well, of course, to bring water technology forward. Uh, and the final part is the business part. That's where Water Alliance comes in. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd tell a little bit about, uh, about Vetsis. Um, so Vetsis is an institute. It's not a university itself, but 23 European universities put up a PhD within the Institute of Vetsis to do that four-year fundamental research program. Um, the companies are involved, they bring in the themes and they guide the 23 research teams together with the professors from the universities. Um, and as an example, I saw, for example, that the, the Catalan Institute for Water Research, the ICRA, uh, that is also uh, linked to uh, Vetsis also on that level, you see that on the fu fundamental uh, research site, uh, we are we are connected with uh, with, with, Spain, with Spain. One of the unique features uh, I always think about uh, when I think uh, that, that makes up of Vetsis is that um, because you're not a single university and, and a single academic field, but uh, they are all combined. So the chemist uh, the chemist is is able to to talk to the uh, to the biologist to solve an issue maybe with with some of the uh, the research that's being done. So by that, creating a unique environment for, for bringing breakthrough water technology further. So the CEW uh, involves a lot with supporting companies in validation, product development, 
and 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 also uh, guiding the demonstration projects that, that we uh, that we see here in the ecosystem. Uh, and, and many of that research is done in the experimental lab of the water application center here in uh, in, in Leeuwarden. Uh, it also has an analytical uh, laboratory, technical support. All that facilities are available. Well, briefly, Water Alliance, we have about 110 Dutch members, all water technology related, startups and SMEs for a large part. And uh, well, our role, uh, we already talked a little bit about. So I've made a little bit of a, of a summary of, of some of the topics that I see out there in the, in the Dutch uh, market. And I think what is, is, is new also in comparison with, with what Xavier and Eric mentioned is that we in the Netherlands, we now face the last year's it trot in summer, which is a little bit of a new situation for us, as we in the Netherlands have been very good at the past to get rid of excess water. Uh, we are now faced in the summer to retain water, reuse water, uh, in order not to have uh, to have shortages. Um, so I think that's one of the main points that I will touch on, on later as well, huh? that, that municipal industrial water reuse application, uh, and that, that finds also a, a new role. Um, also in relation actually to, to the micro pollutants uh, discussion, uh, which, which I also touch base on. Um, next to battling the drought, we use uh, the, the, the hot topic is of course also aquifer research, uh, recharge, subsurface water storage. Eh? Store water when you have it, winter rain, and use it in the summer. Uh, one other big thing on the municipal market is the waste, municipal wastewater treatment works as an energy and nutrient factory. So uh, how can you become energy neutral or uh, optimize and, and gain energy? And also how can you regain nutrients? Uh, for example, a, a nutrient like phosphate is, is an endless resource. Um, so uh, we can reuse that and then the circular economy approach that can be found in there. So these are the, the seven topics that I will go into a little bit more in detail, just to give you a, a generic overview. Zero energy wastewater treatment works. Um, yeah, wastewater treatment works as energy factories. So of course, to gain energy from, for example, your sludge uh, by digestion, uh, the burning of sludge, uh, the burning of, uh, of biogas, uh, but also, of course, by energy optimization. Uh, for example, an Enamox uh, side stream treatment uh, where ammonium is directly uh, transformed into nitrogen gas uh, and, and instead of going the longer way uh, over nitrates and, 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 uh, and, and, and well, aeration. Uh, the thermal hydrolysis of sludge as an optimization within the whole sludge treatment process and, and getting more energy out. Um, even to, and I, I realize this is more relevant for the Netherlands than it probably is for, 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 uh, for Barcelona, but to get heat from wastewater. Uh, so the aqua thermal solutions. So there's uh, really new concrete initiatives in the Netherlands to, to use that smaller delta T uh, within the waste, present within the wastewater together with a heat pump uh, to provide city heating uh, for, for, for certain city blocks. Uh, really a new initiative on, on that energy side. Circular economy, material recycling and resource recovery, uh, projects being realized, for example, on the, on the side of the cellulose recovery. Right? So we have the fine screen, cellulose is recovered, uh, providing less strain on the, on, the, on the following sludge treatment. But if you, like 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 Zyrtec and, 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 and other companies here at, that uh, uh, the members do, can provide a complete value chain for the use of the, the cellulose as a, as a product, for example, for foundations or, or as a co-product in, in uh, ecological materials. Uh, that, so you need that value chain, that, that's an important key. Um, and there's good examples of that uh, happening. Well, I already mentioned the phosphate, uh, so struvite harvesting, uh, mag magnesium ammonium phosphate uh, as, as a fertilizer for, the, uh, for use in the agriculture. So the last weeks also the news came out that in the Netherlands now there will be a plan to realize in the future for biopolymer recovery from sewage. So also there you see full scale live installation within the installations being realized in the municipal market. Uh, approach to circular economy um, and uh, well biodegradable plastics. Yeah. 
the approach that we see in the Netherlands where, where there's not always a direct need for reuse in the sense that we do have a large amount of uh, surface water groundwater available. However, uh, to give an example, which I mentioned here, um, you, you have an industry close to uh, the coast uh, picking up groundwater. Well, because of the drought issues, you see uh, more saline uh, groundwater. So that, that company then faces a choice. Okay, I have this groundwater, it's more saline. I need a D-cell uh, RO membrane to, uh, to remove uh, the, uh, the, the salts. Um, however, you have a municipality on the other side who, who is getting more sensitive towards the micropollutants and the trace substances. And, and, and if you can, so there is initiatives now where you see that both of them are linked. Your municipal sewage treatment plant says, hey, I'm gonna remove micropollutants, uh, uh, residual med uh, medicine residuals, uh, from the uh, from my municipal wastewater, but by that he creates a quality of water which is of course quite good. Huh? You probably put in a membrane, can be a nanofiltration membrane uh, or, or, or other. Um, and what if we can hand over this water to the industry as, as a fit for purpose uh, process water, and that industry can can take it up and use it. The industry doesn't have to take, for example, the saline groundwater and the munis and, and the municipality. Uh, removes micropollutants, but also has a, a revenue model for, for delivering fit for purpose process water. On the other hand, of course, the reuse, uh, the non potable reuse uh, topics are related to uh, also irrigation, also in the Netherlands, uh, and for example, also aquifer uh, recharge, uh, which are topics that are under discussion. Well, uh, I already took uh, a little bit uh, the presentation of one of our companies a little bit up front, but and as an example, I wanted to put in this example of an exfiltration uh, where they put in their nanofiltration membranes directly after the settling tanks in the municipal wastewater treatment plant to remove residual BOD and also micropollutants. In, in, in this case, it's, it's a discharge to water to a sensitive ecological body, but uh, also there, of course, a, a reuse uh, issue or reuse opportunity uh, is there. And exfiltration will present itself uh, also later on uh, in this presentation in more detail. There is more and more uh, room attention also to yeah, what I would call water technology in the built environment. Uh, so here are listed two examples. Decentralized treatment by DESA. So we have a vacuum toilet in a house or an office building. And then we treat the black water, the gray water, and the rain water differently, and we use them differently. So uh, gray water can be treated, reused. Uh, rain water can also be used to flush the toilet, etc. These kind of links, where decentralized treatment sometimes can save a lot of money by uh, diverting the investment in, in a big sewage system. Uh, the other uh, example to the right is the metabolic network reactor from Colubris, uh, also a uh, small footprint but also ecological plants, uh, yeah, recreational approach to um, decentralized uh, wastewater treatment. Anyway, you can integrate it in, in, in buildings or, or in parks, et cetera, et cetera. And another company uh, linked to the, uh, to the water campus is, is Hydroloop, uh, gaining a lot of traction at the moment with their uh, decentral uh, residential gray water recycle system. Uh, so shower water is reused within this machine size of a uh, well, well slightly larger than a well, higher than a, than a washing machine so reuse of shower water uh, and you can flush your toilet with it instead of using valuable drinking water for it yeah digitalization I've, I've not very extensively gone into this one but of course industry 4.0 is, is a hot topic and uh, Xavier also uh, are, Eric, you, you mentioned on, uh, briefly on it, uh, yeah, the integration of information technology, artificial intelligence, uh, digital twins, uh, hot topic. What I do find interesting myself as well, of course, that the whole censoring and, and, and the sensors behind it and that facilitate this, this process is, is a big part of that uh, industry 4.0. Uh, so we see a lot of attention there as well for uh, well, uh, affordable, uh, um, generic type of sensors uh, also here at, at Water Campus. It's a hot topic. An example of a company actively involved there from the, from the Netherlands is AquaSuite of, uh, of Roy Haskoning. Huh? 
uh, analyst and autopilot for, for utilities. One thing I briefly wanted to touch base on it because I think it's, a, it's quite a, an interesting field uh, is the horticulture sector where the horticulture sector and the government have, uh, have a target to be near emission free by 2027. That means reusing water and zero to non emission of crop protection products. Uh, this means recycling water, uh, but that has, of course, limitations. But if you do have some discharge, okay, how many crop protection uh, products are you still allowed to, to discharge to protect the environment? And this is regulated, and, and they, these are this is a field of operation where there's a lot of work put in at the moment, where, where you see typically uh, AOP membrane membrane uh, solutions, but also AOP type of solutions like this one from uh, from Remen UV technology and a combination of oxidation with hydrogen peroxide and uh, disinfection by UV. Yeah, finally, to, uh, to finalize my presentation, just a little bit of a, of a different vision. Um, biological processes are, are, are in that sense ecological because they use bacteria, but they're quite energy intensive. So in that discussion uh, on, on energy optimization, uh, also the life water factory is, is uh, initiative has been, has been uh, executed where there is a, here is dealt with a 100% physical chemical treatment uh, using electrocoagulation uh, to solve air flotation, nanofiltration and ion exchange. And also within that whole treatment process, recover, of course, uh, resources. So uh, energy neutral resource recovery. Also here, that circular economy approach. Just a different vision on what is done conventionally. This is uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you. I would like to uh, give the floor briefly to Eric and we start with the Spanish companies. Thank you, Harro for your interesting presentation. Uh, now uh, we would like to present the first picture for the Catalan Water Partnership, which is going to be Bluefage. Aniset uh, Blanc is the Chief Technology Officer of Bluefage. So Aniset, please, the floor is yours. You can put your camera and mic on, then you can start Blue Phage. And he said. Of, uh, I don't know. Shall we go to to the next one and come back to uh, no, here? Uh, is. Can, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. OK, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, but I had some problems with getting in with the uh, conference. Uh, first of all, thanks for the invitation to, to explain you our, our activities. And um, I would like to say that Bluefage is a spin-off company that was created in 2016 from the University of Barcelona. And we are handling with the development of fast, easy and practical uh, methods for the detection of uh, bacteriophages as viral indicators in water. As probably you know, the microbial water quality uh, is quite, uh, well, it's essential for safety plants and for the sanitation safety in our uh, water, uh, water cycle and has been really well conducted for the last century um, by using bacterial indicators. But bacterial indicators are providing that solutions, but not all of them because uh, viral um, human pathogens, uh, viral human pathogens can go through the many of the of the treatments and processes that we have to to to, to improve the quality of our um, wastewater um, um, structures. So for instance, the, the viral the viruses can cross the membranes. They are more persistent in the environment and more resistant to the treatments and they are replicating faster than the bacteria. So because, all of, because of all of that, in the last uh, uh, decades, um, the scientific community has developed an, an, an approach similar to the bacteria to develop, to identify a viral indicator. These viral indicator are the coliphages and coliphages are bacteria that are infecting enteric, uh, are viruses, sorry, that are infecting enteric bacteria in our intestine. Uh, please, the next one. 
and you said you should have control of the presentation and you can move forward, I think. Okay, thanks. I see. Um, so that means that uh, because we identified the colifages in the last uh, during the last years, um, in many countries at, at the beginning of this millennium, um, they started to introduce this parameter in the different regulations. Um, those, sorry, but I cannot move the, the screen up and down, forward or back. You can use no. your uh, laptop buttons, maybe that works. No. No, sorry, but I cannot. No problem, just uh, let us know next. Uh, no, please, uh, I need to, to go back a couple of slides, please. Next, uh, before the, the, that one, okay. So because the uncolifages were identified has a, a, a very useful vi um, viral indicator. Uh, at the beginning of this millennium, many different countries were introducing this parameter in the in their revision of the regulation related with water. Uh, the WHO was introducing in the guidelines in 2017 the, um, the measure of somatic coliphages in the drinking water that makes a, 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 was pro 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 promoting a spin up of the uh, introduction of these coliphages in the regulations. Next one, please. Uh, there are standard methods for the, uh, for the analysis of coliphages. Uh, there are ISO methods and also the United States. Uh, protection agency was also developed those methods 20 years ago and uh, these methods these standard methods uh, needs uh, a lot of uh, work previously you applied them they need uh, to prepare biological material our multi-step process you need calibrate mediums and you get the answer of or the results after 24 hours at least or even in sometimes 48 because you need confirmation analysis next one please because of, because of that, Bluefage was uh, um, looking for to provide something more easier for the end user to analyze these coliphages. This is what we pretend in our approach, in our mission, to, to try to save time, make easy the analysis of coliphages, and contribute to save lives uh, because of the improving of the, of the quality of our waters. Next one, please. Uh, we developed two, two, two different uh, portfolios of products. The first kits that we have been developed are those kits that we call easy kits, and they are providing all the components to perform the standard methods that already are defined in the, uh, in the ISO. So uh, you, you just get these, these, these kits and you can perform perfectly the ISO or the US EPA, US EPA methods as requested in, 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 in those protocols. And another one, it's the fast kits that are uh, protected by a patent that we develop. Uh, and uh, those methods allow a uh, very high sensitivity. We can detect one virus, one coliphage in 100 milliliters of water. Are, this is the level of sensitivity that are in requesting by the WHO or the European Commission. There are uh, protocols quite simple, six steps in front of the 12 steps of, of the standard methods, very fast. In 20 minutes, you can do everything. Total time is six hours. And uh, we know that our equivalence to the ISO and we will be uh, um, doing the validation when uh, now uh, we extend it in the market, the, the kits in the coming month. Next one, please. Um, this is the rapid kit. The rapid kit is basically a change of color. Um, as I told you, this is a patent, uh, a patent based uh, approach that uh, if the sample that you are using, it's not changing the color after four hours of uh, incubation, the, there is no viruses in that water. But if there is a change of color because uh, the, the, the patent that we develop based in a modified bacterial host, then the, the media turns a, a, a green color and that means that there are viruses in, 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 in the bottle. I have a, a video, but I don't know with the problems with the connection that I have. I don't know if I can show you that, that video that you can see the, the change of the color. So what we have basically with that technology um, is that um, you, can, you can see uh, if you have or not have uh, uh, viruses because uh, then you see the change of the color. That means that you, it's a test of qual for qualification means presence of absence of the viruses, but also because it's progressive, the change of the color and it's proportional to the concentration of the viruses, you see how slowly it's changing the color. And 
we have been quantified the change of the color related with the concentration of the virus that you have in your sample. Next slide, please. That allows us to determine the quantification of, of, of the analysis. So we are working, finishing to develop now uh, an, an approach taking several pictures with a QR uh, level that we can quantify along the time in a very short period of time, four and, a, four and a five hours, how the color is changing. And you can see here in this graph how high concentrations, obviously the speed is it's faster than, than in with low concentrations. Next one, please. So uh, our fast methods, uh, we developed fast methods for the three groups of, of bacteriophages, somatic coliphages, F-specific and total coliphages. They are working in around six hours, very simple protocols, one PFU, one virus is in 100 milliliters. They are equivalent to ISO or EPA methods. It's quite simple to do it. You don't need to be a qualified macrobiologist to perform these tests. These tests, we can do presence and absence, and we can also quantify the results. Um, next one, please. It can be applied, has been already demonstrated in the publications that we already did and, and, and the explanations that we can provide to our customers that can be applied in selfies, in recreational waters, in drinking water, in wastewater, reclaimed water and biosolids. It's quite important because this year the new regulations of reclaimed water have been approved last June in Europe and also the drinking water is almost approved. Uh, the new the new drinking water uh, directive and coliphages are included in in both new regulations next one please could you come slowly to an end uh, mr bunch because uh, we have some other people lined up as well okay and uh, um, those people that like to get more information you can contact us in the reference that we provide here thanks thank you and for your presentation and presenting your rapid kits now we will move to our poll uh, Laura Morera is the business developer of Arpol. Please, Laura Morera, the floor is yours. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, yes, I'm the business developer from uh, Arpol company. About Arpol company, uh, well, we are a family company born in 1976, which means that we have uh, more than 40 years of history at the moment. And the third generation of the family is nowadays running the company. We manufacture flexible couplings for pipes. So our product is used in pipe connection and pipe repairs. Our uh, factory is located in, in a village close to Barcelona. Uh, we count on uh, 5,000 square meter at the moment and we have a complete control on the production process, which means that we are able, hold on, let's see if it works for me, okay. So it means that we are able to adapt to the specific needs of the, um, the customer application in case there are any urgencies for a pipe repair or a water uh, subministration that needs to be stopped. So the main sectors where we work are the water works, meaning uh, water treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants, mainly located in the maintenance team. Uh, where they use our couplings for pipe connections and pipe reapers. Our couplings are all manufactured in a high quality basis, all of them made of stainless steel. Then uh, Waterworks will be our main uh, market with around the 60% of our sales, but we are also focused in the irrigation market, which is strong for us in the south part of Spain in the industry market, which would be stronger in uh, Europe, uh, center of Europe, Germany, and the mining, where of course it depends on the geography of the country, and it would be for us strong in Chile or in Canada. So these are the different designs that uh, we have. Of course, um, they are developed and designed um, for the specific applications or the needs of the customer, I will not go into them. I will just like to mention them, which are the five different families. That's how we call them. It's install for installations, rep for repairs. And then we have the fix, trans and neo, which are some other designs for the specific applications that I mentioned. Of course, we can go deeper in case we can have a one-to-one -one meeting. The important thing to understand is about the, the design of the gasket. So that's what we call it our secret, right? It's about, um, we have two different channels 
where the water travels. So we use the internal water pressure of the pipeline to be able to make what we call an hydraulic sealing function. So with this, uh, with the higher uh, water pressure that we have inside the pipeline, a better adjustment that we can have on the coupling. This means that the gasket is always the one in touch with the pipe surface. So this uh, is what it allows us to call it flexible coupling. This flexibility that gives us allows us to have some advantages um, when we have some cases in case of angular deflection, when we have some manhole to connect, for example, when we have a, a pipe surface uh, with some irregular surfaces that may happen in some pipe materials like concrete, some axial movements where it happens a lot in the, um, in the plastic pipes, vibrations in case the pipe it is located close, let's say to a road with a heavy traffic or a bridge, or some radial deformations in case we have, let's say an old uh, pipeline that we need to renew and we can count on different locks to have the coupling adjustment. So we just took some, uh, well, three different examples that ARPO can be used instead of welding connections instead of flanged connections or instead of a traditional ductile item products which are heavier and more difficult to install. About the purpose of our participation in these, in these, um, these meetings, it's just to present our solution to companies who are using maybe another type of products that, uh, or, or some other ways of working like welding or flange connections that we spoke before. Our coupling is considered the most reliable solution for repair. Uh, it can be considered also a definitive solution for repair. And we will also like to present our company culture and service, which as I told you before, we have the complete control of our manufacturing uh, production. So we have the chance to have a made to measure production for any of the outside diameters in all pipe materials. Then we can adapt for any urgencies. We have uh, a fast response in 12, 24 hours. And of course, we have a, a technical team that can give personalized technical assistance in case there is a specific need. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, of course, I'll be happy to answer any, any questions. Thank you, Lara, for your presentation. And now we'll move to the last Catalan participant, which is Alberto Hernández from ITC, who's the export manager. So, Alberto, the floor is yours. So, Alberto? Can... Yeah, I, I I can't. You connect. cannot con you one cannot... second. Now, can you hear me? Can you see me and hear me? We can yeah. hear you, let and me, yeah, we can see you. Just let okay. me go back. And uh, you closed up all the applications, uh, uh, Alberto. <laughs> just uh, sorry. <laughs> just, <laughs> sorry. Just use your mouse only to go through the sheet, and uh, you're online now. Okay. Perfect. Now I can put the, the presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. As Eric said, uh, my name is Alberto Hernandez and I'm the export manager for ITC company. ITC is a Spanish company located in the outskirts of Barcelona. Uh, we started our activities more than 30 years ago. And the main focus for our products is the injection of chemical products. These chemical products can be applied in any kind of process, uh, especially in water-related applications. But uh, we have products which are also specific for agriculture applications, for industry, for industrial water, and for everything related to water treatment. ITC nowadays is exporting around 70% of the town over or over the world. We have a commercial branch in California to cover the American market, which is our main market in the United States 
is the main market for us after Spain. We have also a joint venture in India where we manufacture some specific models just for the Indian market. Uh, the rest of the world is covered by distributors. What does ITC manufacture? Mostly dosing pumps, the, chem the machines used for the injection of chemical in the processes. Uh, we manufacture electric pumps. I will not go deep on the products because the range is quite wide. I will just summarize some, some of the most interesting pro products for us. Uh, we manufacture electric pumps up to 3,200 per hour, small capacity pumps with magnetic motor uh, up to 90 tons per hour. We also manufacture mixers, some hydraulic pumps related to the injection of fertilizers in agriculture. We decided also many years ago to go to the control systems in order to be able to monitor and control some parameters related to the water quality and through the use of the dosing pumps being able to modify these characteristics. In addition to that, we have also developed our own sensors, especially conductivity and free chlorine, which are manufactured also at our premises. And lately, uh, given the development of the digitalization and the industry 4.0, we also develop applications and systems for communication. One of the most advanced products we manufacture is the Dostek AC pump. This pump is a pump that can be communicated and controlled from any place. We have an application which can be downloaded from any uh, cell phone, or it can also be operated by any web in any computer. So from any place in the world, we have access to the pumps, we have access to our controllers, and we can not only read, but we can also change what is the operation for this equipment. I'm proud to say that we were the first company in the world to develop such kind of technology for dosing equipment. What we look for in this meeting, we look for a commercial partnership for the development of the water business in the Netherlands. Nowadays, we work with a company for, in, for agriculture for more than 25 years in the Netherlands, but they have not gone deep in the water business. And we would like to find someone to be on this part. What are the general requirements for that? Uh, a global knowledge about the water business because the use of our products uh, can be applied to any part of the water applications, cooling towers, drinking water, wastewater, any kind of process related to water need dosing pumps or control system. We also ask them to have technical proficiency because one of the most important points for us is the advice and the service. And this is something that our partners has also to keep in mind. To do that, what can we offer? First of all, one of the most advanced companies in terms of communication for those equipment. We have all the technical support from our technical department in order to make know-how transfer and also to supply any kind of tailor-made product. Additionally, we prepare trainings nowadays, not physical, but remote, so all our partners have the same knowledge as we have here. One of the most important points for us is the fast delivery times for our products. We are able to deliver almost every pump in our system in less than three working days. And the most important for us is to make our partners feel that they are part of the ITC family. And I think that I finished with my five minutes. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, we can get a B2B contact afterwards. Thank you very much, uh, Alberto. Um, we will now continue to the next uh, part of the, the presentation, and it is the, the pitches of the Dutch companies. Um, I, I would, yeah, in, in, in general, of course, please stick a little bit within the time. Uh, there, there's enough opportunity within the B2Match 
program to follow up and, and go into more detail about cooperation or, or more technical uh, questions. So it's really about have, present yourself and uh, and move on. I would like to uh, uh, yeah, present uh, the speakers. So we start with Bluecom, Peter de Jong, followed by NX Filtration, Robert uh, Gerard, and then uh, Robert Gerard, and then Pure Water Group with Amaya Dugarte. Uh, so I'll give the floor to Peter. Thank you very much. Good morning, good dag, bon dia. Let's see if I can already use the slides. Yeah. Tiny delay. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Uh, I would like to present to you uh, the, innov the innovative solution from the company called Bluecon. Uh, I think it connects well with many of the challenges that were stated uh, this morning by the Catalan Water Partnership and also with some of the opportunities which were actually mentioned uh, from the Water Alliance. Um, so Bluecon has developed the next generation of water treatment, which is a very reliable technology, especially for smaller towns and communities. Uh, and what it uh, basically does is it separates water from the sludge. Um, by treating the water and what you obtain is a water quality that is very suitable for water reuse. Uh, I will go into that in more detail. First of all, I would like to emphasize that, of course, there are many ways for the treatment plants already installed, also in smaller towns and communities. Um, but uh, many of them, especially when they are treating uh, the water with biological treatment systems, um, they often run into problems, uh, and that's because of the small size and usually not having on site the right people to continuously please the conditions of these bacteria. Of course, in large cities, uh, this is uh, much less of a problem, but especially the smaller the site, the more tricky biological treatment uh, works. I'm trying to go to the next slide here. But there we go, slight delay. Um, so what I mentioned, it's a new solution, which is um, ideal for about 200 to 20,000 people, uh, villages or cities. Um, as was mentioned by Haro, this is uh, one of the more upcoming types of wastewater treatment. It's uh, based on physical and chemical um, processes. And with this, it can treat domestic wastewater and enable uh, for water reuse. Uh, as also was mentioned by the Catalan Water Partnership, uh, there is an increasing scarcity of water in uh, Catalonia and Spain. So in that sense, this could be a very interesting solution. Uh, it can also be uh, very ideal for situations where you have tourism in summer, because you can actually uh, ramp up and down this production as quickly as you want, just uh, by activating the machine or shutting it down. Uh, so it can also be used to upgrade an existing wastewater treatment plant. Um, and um, last but not least, uh, it was mentioned uh, that indeed uh, there are emerging pollutants in the water, such as, for instance, pharmaceuticals, and these can also be removed by this treatment system. Next. Yeah, here we go. So now you get a picture of what actually uh, the result of this product uh, can be. You see the influence of the domestic wastewater treatment, uh, sorry, wastewater on the left. Then conventional wastewater treatment plants uh, provide the effluent you see in the middle, which of course is uh, usually according to the, the, the different uh, legislations in Europe and, and very well suitable to put in, for instance, surface water. Uh, but specifically the blue cone effluent can be uh, treated to a much higher uh, value. And what you see in this beaker is water that has been also treated with a specific polishing module, which is uh, using uh, ozone. And this means you remove color and smell. Uh, and this makes this water very useful for, for instance, reuse even in the household to do uh, the washing machine, but also for other um, uh, purposes in public parks, um, in, in waters where there is more contact with the pets, humans, swimming water, etc. Here you see more chemical analysis. So first it's important to mention that the uh, treatment always uh, includes disinfection. So any bacteria or virus is removed. 
uh, this uh, enables this wastewater uh, that is treated to comply with the new legislation in Europe about uh, water reuse. So you can actually obtain the quality class A, B, C, and D according to your needs. Um, and um, yeah, the, the disinfection is performed by a special product called OxyBlue, which is developed by Bluecon. Uh, it is consistent with the most active reagent is uh, hypochlorite. And because it also uses UV lights, the chlorine is in the process removed. So there's no free radical chlorine in the water. Uh, as mentioned, the pharmaceuticals uh, are removed and especially also when the polishing module is activated, then uh, what you see here, the obtained results in blue, uh, they can be further uh, reduced uh, if needed. So you can even go lower in DOD, COD um, or other parameters according to the specific needs. Uh, and yeah, it does comply with the uh, new targets in Europe regarding uh, effluent, but also um, uh, wastewater that is uh, needed for, for instance, um, uh, agriculture. What you see here is uh, recent photos. Uh, at the moment, Bluecon uh, is on a course to travel around Europe and show how actually effective technology works in practice and that you can easily install it and get it running in one day. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it has already um, performed uh, um, tests in Turkey, Romania, the Netherlands in October in Portugal. And um, the last one uh, uh, at the moment, they're ready to start doing it in Spain. So uh, with this, I would like to end the, the, the presentation, but I would like to ask for two things. One, uh, is there anyone out there that actually has locally a need for decentralized wastewater treatment? is locally maybe one of the treatment sites, uh, biological and currently not working, then, then please contact us. And on top of that, if you are an installer or distributor and interested in putting this product in the market in Catalonia, then also please let us know. Uh, thank you for your attention so far and uh, we're ready for any questions. Thank you. Next company presenting is NX Filtration, Robert Gerard. Floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for organizing this. I think it's a, it's a very good way in these uh, tough times uh, to connect with one another. Um, Annex Filtration is a uh, relatively young company. We started in 2016, but we started with a team uh, that had a proven track record in membrane filtration. So we are quite, uh, we were able to quickly uh, get manufacturing going and um, yeah, install and come up with a commercially available product. The company right now is about 50 persons um, and we do have references in, uh, in Europe, obviously, but also in the United States and uh, in East Asia. Um, all the products that we manufacture are hollow fiber membranes, uh, but with unique properties. Okay, uh, here you see the uh, complete range of products that we have. On the right, uh, a couple of microfiltration membranes that are mainly used for beer and wine filtration. In the middle, um, some unique, very tight ultrafiltration membranes. And then on the left, and this is where our uh, this presentation is going to focus on uh, some hollow fiber nanofiltration membranes. And there are two types, a DNF40 and a DNF80 with uh, different um, molecular weight cutoffs. Uh, and this would mean that a product uh, uh, that has, uh, for instance, for the DNF40, that has a molecular weight that is around 400 Daltons will be removed by this membrane. And the other one uh, would remove uh, materials that are 800 Daltons and larger, uh, which would include uh, the majority of the uh, or dissolved organics in your feed water, for instance. We also do remove some of the salts in the water as indicated here. And this shows you how we manufacture the product. Uh, we spin a fiber, a hollow fiber, and then we coat the inside of this fiber with uh, nano layers. Uh, we could apply as many as five, six of these layers on top of each other. And the more layers we apply, the tighter the membrane becomes. And this is how we're able to yeah, manufacture uh, these membranes uh, with, with properties that are different from any other uh, membrane available on the market uh, today. So this is different 
from a reverse osmosis membrane, eh, which typically is flat sheet, and uh, has uh, is manufactured from uh, polyamide type uh, material. Here we we truly use a different configuration, a hollow fiber, and um, also a different chemistry uh, on the, uh, with the layers that we apply to the membrane. The reason we use hollow fiber is that it is a lot more fouling tolerant than a spiral wound flat sheet membrane. A spiral wound would have spacers, and these spacers tend to get clogged with uh, suspended materials, uh, bacteria, biogrowth, etc. Um, so we are able to, in a traditional process, uh, we might have, uh, certainly if you have a surface water or a wastewater, you might have a coagulation step, a clarification step, and then maybe a sand filter prior to an ultrafiltration membrane. And then eventually uh, you, you start to remove the organics and the salts with a, uh, a tighter reverse osmosis or nanofiltration step. We are able to replace all of these unit operations with one step. So uh, the pretreatment is usually a little strainer. Uh, uh, 100, 200 micron strainer, and then we would go straight into our membranes. The feed water uh, could be a wastewater, uh, just a municipal uh, or industrial uh, effluent, wastewater effluent after a conventional uh, treatment system, biological treatment system. Uh, we could take it right after the settling tanks and go into our membranes and remove the majority of the BOD and the COD and some of the salts as well. One other example, and um, Haro showed that earlier uh, in, uh, in his presentation, uh, would be to remove, uh, for instance, uh, nano and uh, micro uh, plastic particles or micro pollutants. Uh, the product initially was developed to really be very effective in the removal of micro pollutants from uh, wastewater or surface water. So the unique fe features of this product, uh, I touched upon the, uh, the hollow fiber construction, uh, which allows you to, uh, to have suspended materials in your feed water. You do not require extensive pretreatment. Um, the energy um, is, is quite low. Uh, we're looking at uh, less, typically less than 0.3 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. Operating pressures are typically three to five bar. It's chemical free. We do not uh, like coagulants uh, being injected in the water, so no sludge production. Uh, we are able to confirm that the integrity of the membrane is there. So if you're looking at a drinking water application, that of course is a very important feature. That is something you're not able to do with a spiral wound uh, product. And one of the most important things, yeah, as I mentioned, is that it is fouling tolerant. Uh, um, and that includes uh, the ability to hydraulically clean these membranes. Uh, you can backwash or flush or change the flow direction. Uh, so that's, these are means of hydraulically cleaning, uh, which has the, the preference. Um, but we're also able to uh, apply chlorine, uh, which, and that's definitely a un unique feature uh, in, uh, in, in membranes. We're able to clean these systems with relatively high levels of chlorine. 100, 200 ppm uh, would not be any problem. Also, continuous operation with chlorine is an option. I think I'm a little stuck here with uh, moving the slide forward. Ah, thank you. Um, here you see um, an example of, uh, of, of an installation, uh, in this case in the Philippines, where we are removing color from water. Uh, colors uh, are typically humic acids, so relatively large uh, molecular weight. And in this case, we're able to uh, treat the water, uh, in this case from a very bad quality well water, uh, take out all of the color, uh, and in the beginning, the water, uh, the, the water would look like uh, tea, in some cases even coffee, uh, and we're able to, pr to uh, produce clear water uh, without any color uh, in a one-step process. So what are we looking for? Uh, we are a manufacturer of membranes only. Uh, so we're looking for equipment manufacturers uh, in Spain that uh, 
have some experience with, with membranes. And I know there are many of them in, uh, in, in Spain, reverse osmosis, of course. As, as mentioned earlier by Xavier and Eric, you're a leader when it comes to uh, membrane technology, using membrane technology for, uh, for drinking water production. But we're looking for these kinds of partners uh, to help us uh, with construction, uh, constructing systems that would comply with local requirements. And we then are able to provide, obviously, the membrane products, but also the technology around it. And uh, of course, we're also looking for, for end users with uh, separation problems uh, that want to reuse wastewater or uh, treat uh, surface waters. Could you slowly come to an end, please, uh, Robert? That's it, uh, Harold. Ah, I'm done. <laughs> then I'll continue. Thanks for that presentation. So next one coming up is the Pure Water Group. Uh, I'd like to give the floor to Amaya Dugarte. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Well, first of all, thank you. It's a pleasure to, to participate in this webinar today. Well, my name is Amaya Dugarte. I'm working for Pure Water Group as a sales engineer since 2013. And well, Pure Water Group um, is founded in 1988 by Johan Ossenblock and is highly specialized in the EDI technology, electrodeionization, for the production of pure and ultra pure water and high purity water. The headquarters is located in the south of the Netherlands, but there are other two entities uh, based in Spain and in the UK. Uh, let me see. I can scroll down. Okay, thanks. Well, our company vision and mission is the design and delivery of high quality water purification systems based on sustainable and environmental friendly technologies or water uh, system integrators or so-called OEMs uh, all over the world. Our core technologies are EDI, as mentioned earlier, for the production of uh, ultra pure and pure water for a wide range um, of applications, such as the power generation industry, like steam production or hydrogen production, and the semiconductor industry among, yeah, all of them. Secondly is the electrodialysis reversal for desalination and water reuse. Also has a yeah, massive range of um, uh, applications, such as tap and process and wastewater uh, treatment. RO recovery and minimum liquid discharge applications. And lastly, but not least, the high purity water systems that are combined, uh, combined technologies and uh, mainly uh, used for the hemodialysis, medical and pharmaceutical sectors. Um, yeah, yeah, you probably, uh, you probably may know our company from the ITER or other yeah, main power projects. Um, in Spain, for instance, we, we deliver uh, many systems to most of the CSP plants um, located in, yeah, in Spain and as well lots in, in, in Africa. Also, I would like to highlight uh, one of the other most tempting projects we, we've, we've done is the NAM project that's uh, located in the Netherlands, where we delivered uh, five high capacity EDI systems for ultra pure water for steam production. Um, besides this, we're also very active in the medical and pharmaceutical market. Um, actually in the Netherlands, we're market leader in the supply and um, in of complete water treatment and distribution plants for hemodialysis um, sector. Uh, next one, please. Yeah. So all this hard uh, work actually has led us to, to become the a world market leader in the electrodeionization technology. And we are the biggest customer of Ion Pure Evoqua, who designated us uh, international master service provider in 2004. 
Therefore, well, our company um, ambition is to continue and further expand our EDI business activities in the uh, um, before mentioned uh, different applications, of course, and um, due to the similarities with the uh, among technologies, we'd like to achieve the same with our inno innovative um, electrodesalination technologies. Uh, next, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Pure Water Group offers um, ready to run equipment, whether it's uh, skip mountain systems or containerized, um, as well as modules and accessories from our um, large stock in the Netherlands, technical training and support, commissioning, and after sale service, of course. So, in fact, our, our cooperation can be quite simple. As soon as your company identifies uh, any potential water treatment project where our technologies can be implemented, just send us the capacity, feed water analysis, and product water specifications. And in return, we will send you a complete um, technical and commercial proposal, performance projection, and possible uh, further recommendations. And um, that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Amaya. Thank you, Amaya. So, so how do we move to the do, to the questions and answers session? Yes, I've seen um, already in the in the chat and the Q and A that there's been some um, interaction uh, between participants and, uh, and and some of the speakers. Um, could you maybe put one or two questions up for the uh, for the whole? Group. Yeah. See, uh, Eric. Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, we have one question in the general chat I want to make before forgetting it, which is addressed to Robert for NX filtration. Robert, if you want to put your camera on and your mic, uh, okay. they are asking if you have experience to treat side streams from anaerobic digestion. Um, yes, we do. We do. And uh, we can go to pretty high levels for both uh, BOD and TUC. Um, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's definitely an, uh, an area of interest uh, to us. Okay, thank you very much. And also, uh, we're gonna move to the chat. Uh, we have the last question uh, to Peter. Peter uh, from Bluecom. They are asking, what are the power requirements of your process? And does it use reagents? Yeah, thank you. Um, the energy use is around 0 0.5 kilowatts per cubic meter. And uh, indeed, in the process, uh, the, the process starts with uh, flocculants. Uh, then there is a special mix of oxidants, uh, which is uh, oxy blue, provided uh, by Bluecon. Um, and yeah, depending on uh, specific needs, there could be other reagents, for instance, to further reduce uh, ammonia. But uh, these are the primary uh, ingredients, let's say. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, we have uh, some of the uh, questions made through the Q&A chat have been answered already. But anyway, Laura, would you like to develop a bit more on the question about the caskets uh, of Varpol? Hello, Eric. Well, um, it was a question from uh, from uh, Mr. Hans, who uh, well, he's he's already using our competitor, which is is nice as uh, he has a knowledge of, of the product. And well, I mean, need to let's say exchange some additional details regarding technically which are the gaskets because I believe. Um, He's using just a spur part of the coupling. It's not the complete uh, coupling itself with the stainless steel casing and, and the gasket. So I just told um, Hans that maybe it would be nice to arrange, let's say, a, a meeting through the B2B platform, maybe, you know, to exchange, um, to, to have a better knowledge myself on, on what he is using already. For the for the filters and see if there is any way that we can propose something for for his comparison. Actually, that that sounds great. That was the the objective of this uh, of this webinar, and it's a good opportunity for you to uh, kick off the platform and request a meeting. 
And uh, lastly, a uh, few questions that have been addressed to the Catalan Water Partnership. Uh, and that I'm going to read out loud. Uh, Hans Wouters, Mr. Hans, uh, you've asked about um, the, nitri the nitrate removal in, and the parties involved. Uh, well, it was actually a project uh, focused on the removal of nitrate from great groundwater. And uh, I'd like you to um, say that if you have interest in, in part in companies that uh, focus on that topic, you, you could actually request uh, a meeting uh, to myself and I would be delighted to, to have a meeting with you and discuss about that. And uh, regarding the percentage of process uh, and drinking water, uh, from groundwater, the water well actually we receive uh, it actually comes from two sources: surface water, which makes up to 66 percent from uh, with groundwater from aquifers, and uh, the remain. Sorry, what did you say here? Uh, the surface water accounts uh, 66 percent, and the remainder is the the groundwater. I don't know if I made it clear. Uh, there, I think there haven't been more questions. If you have any question now, it's the time to, to use the chat. And if not, I think, Haro, I will give the floor to you so you can explain the platform. Perfect, yeah, I think um, a lot of the, the technical details and then the further questioning and meeting, uh, of, of course, that's where we have the, the B2Match platform. Uh, for which I would briefly like to, to, to touch in the, in the next slide before we come to, uh, to a closing. Um, well, everybody has made up their, their profile, so uh, the company profile, so they have, have become slightly familiar with the program. Um, one thing I, I always stress is that uh, you're, you're quite flexible as a company participating in uh, asking for meetings, but also scheduling meetings when and it fits you. Uh, and you don't have to, huh? you can reject if, the, if it doesn't seem interesting. However, I would also always encourage to, to, to have the meeting and to, 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 to speak uh, to each other. And if after five minutes it appears <laughs> that there's no common ground, that, that's also a finding. So, uh, but I, I do in these times uh, would like to encourage the exchange uh, and using the B2Match, uh, B2Match platform in that. We will keep it open till the, uh, the, the 13th of November. And, uh, and, and the window we provided in the, in the, in the sessions, as we, as, as we call it in B2Match, is between one and four and uh, five, sorry. Um, there is quite a lot on how it works on the B2Match site, if you, uh, if, if you look there. Uh, so how you can uh, organize your, your virtual uh, meetings. Nonetheless, if you do have any remarks, questions, or got stuck, uh, please let us know. Either Eric with the below email address, or my colleague uh, Lisbeth from the Water Alliance, or, or me or my colleague Timon. Uh, we will there to support you and bring you further. Um, now, I think that leaves me with uh, thanking you all for participating in this uh, in, in this webinar. I think it's for us. It's important to plant the seeds uh, for physical meetings that will be also present hopefully again in the, in, in the not so far away uh, future. Um, and uh, yeah, we will be looking forward to, uh, to continue the, the, the fruitful exchange with, uh, with the Catalan Water Partnership. Um, any words from your side, Eric? Uh, no, uh, thank you very much, Haro and the Water Alliance team for organizing uh, this event. And I don't know if Xavier Cluster manager of the CBP would like to say uh, a few words. Well, uh, I think everything it's it's said. The only only thing it's a, a good opportunity for for everybody to 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 be open to to participate in all the matchmaking. I think this this kind of meetings is a big opportunity to to make more cooperation between uh, Water Alliance and Catalan Water Partnership in all international events in WebTech, AquaTech. Uh, in a lot of places uh, uh, have opportunities to, to share uh, or, or promote B2B between Water Alliance and Catalan Water Partnership. Now we, we make, or we must do in virtual virtual events. Thank you for, for everything. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Bel. <laughs> wishing everybody to stay healthy, wishing you good water business and uh, have a good week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bel.